Okay, so this is um, this is a I would say an odd one, but I don't know if it counts as odd. Currently in Vegas, the Luxor just have you know stuff that's at least mostly taken care of, folded and whatnot. Um, not a bad room, just you know, it is what it is. And I'm stalling, I know. It's so funny when I stall starting stuff that I myself choose to do. It's the weirdest thing. Um, this one is basically the fang episode, for lack of a better phrase. I'm having a very hard time dealing with this diagnosis um, for fang. So trying to wrap my head around it and... I'm like, okay, for a little bit. And then I burst into tears and stuff like that. So I decided I'm going to do a, you're going to see why Fang is so wonderful. And that means you are going to have to follow along. I made a folder of Fangmeister. So that is what I am going to show. So here we go. This is Fang when he first showed up. This is before I even took him to the vet. You can see that he had that really bad thing with his eyes. So he had a really, really, really rough start, which I think is pretty sad. All right. My cute little baby Fang. Isn't he adorable? You know, I think I'm just going to leave him open. Why not, right? As he's slowly getting bigger, and he was already taking over laying on top of me, trying to always be a part of everything I'm doing. That's when he was attacking my little shark stuffed animal. He used to try to run around with it. I thought that was cute. I think that is one of my favorites right there. Okay, I'm going to close these others, but I'm keeping that one open. Because that's the one I think I'm going to end on. So friggin' cute. As he got bigger, you can tell he's older there. I'm already tearing up. As I'm studying herpetology, he always would get in the way of me trying to study because I needed to be giving him all the attention. Oh, this is a recent one. This should be for later. This one is a more recent one here. You can see the cancer right there. That's where it's growing. This one is just about two weeks ago. Here's his nice normal side. Here's the cancer. So it's just kind of bulging out. Just another pretty thing. He loves to block people from doing what they want to do. This one is so funny the number of pictures i have of fang laying on keyboards blocking people from doing what they want to do it's just great and then showing how much fang and osiris just absolutely love each other yes i know i could have done this like a nice pretty slideshow but i didn't just more of my little fang and osiris this I absolutely love. I had a uh, bird cage because I used to have birds a while back. And instead of keeping birds, I put a Neopet in there and there's nothing else in there. And the cats were so confused for the longest time. I finally gave it away. But it was always funny watching them try to figure out what was in there. This is Fang's favorite toy. Still have it to this day. So I've been thinking... I've been thinking when the time comes of making like a shadow box with some pictures and putting the toy in there. So 
still have this teddy bear. He took a lot of comfort from that when he was a kitten. That was pre-Osiris. And then just how much they love to just lay on me. And sleep on me. <laughs> They're so funny. This is after I had surgery, by the way. <clears throat> they wouldn't leave me alone. They were always laying on top of me, trying to make sure I was okay. See, there he is. Tucked under the blanket. Always with me. That was 2015. 2015. Fang always has to be as close to me as physically possible. And that's pretty much what all these are. You can see the little gunky eyes. That's from his rough start. Because he had a rough, rough, rough start. But look how beautiful he is. This is after we moved in to uh, where we live now. You can see how absolutely gorgeous he is. And now compare that to how this looks here now. It's all bunched up. Oh, so pretty. Keeping that one open. Just my absolutely beautiful baby. He's in there. He's in the shark. He still sleeps in the shark. It's so cute. Again. Beautiful, beautiful baby. We don't have the coffee maker there anymore. We moved it. But, ah, oh, my beautiful, beautiful boy. This is him now. This is his origin. This is when he first appeared. I know I can just do that thing, but there you go. This is the day he showed up. That's the day he showed up in uh, when he was four weeks old. This is him now. He was younger and he would try to get into my into my backpack. <laughs> he kept trying to come to school with me. And to work. And this just shows. Him and Cyrus. This is, this is what the cancer is doing to my baby. Now this is what the cancer is doing to my poor guy. And there's nothing that can be done. It's just palliative care. So I'm giving him, well, we are giving him pain meds twice a day and steroids twice a day. He's still hungry. He still runs around. He still has a strong purr. He's still acting very much like himself. But when he looks at you, this is what you see. Instead of this. This is hard. And what I've been told is I have to just keep track of the good days versus the bad days. And when there's more bad days than good days, that's when I have to make that choice. I have to make that decision. The one that I know is more the most humane, the one to help him, 
because he shouldn't have to be in pain. And I don't want him to suffer. But I'm not ready to let him go. Because this is horrible. It is. It's horrible. But what I see still to this day, I see this. I see the years of him just sleeping on me and me waiting. The comfort of him being there for me for each of my graduations, because he showed up before I got my bachelor's. He's been there for the classwork. He's been there for the kids growing up. He's been there for the moves. He's been there for so many deaths. It's, this is, this is my fang. And I don't know how to do it. And the idea that I'm going to have to be the one that says, go ahead and stop his life. That's hard. <clears throat> it's very, very hard. I owe it to him to hold him as he leaves. I owe it to him to make it as gentle as possible. Chris told me that there are people who will come up, you know, vets that will come and euthanize at home. I asked our vet about that. Our vet does not do it, but she said that she's heard of them too and that they've all been very kind. And so I already know that's how we're going to do it. I'm trying to prepare myself. And I want to sit there and go, okay, he's going to make it a few more months. I want him to make it to Christmas. But in reality, I don't know. I don't know how long he can last. I don't know how long is fair to have him last. But I also can't handle the idea of having to say, yeah, go ahead stuff out in life. I don't know. I envision it that I'll sit and I'll hold him because he loves me holding him. But the idea of his life just disappearing in my arms. It's just too much. And then I know, I know that, that I don't have to be thinking about all this right now, but I can't stop. It's like, yes, enjoy the moments I have. <clears throat> And I am. But I just keep thinking about this and it's so hard because I'm trying to prepare myself, but I don't know how. I don't know how I'm going to be able, how I'm going to be able to deal with telling someone, yes, stop it. <clears throat> I don't know how to let it go. I don't know for burying him how I'm going to do that. I don't know how I'm going to be able to place him in there. It's just a <laughs> It's just not fair. So clearly I'm trying to work 
on accepting and learning how to let go. Uh, but I don't want to. <clears throat> I'm not good at this letting go thing. I'm still working on letting go of Brian <laughs> from 91. I haven't accepted Jim dying last year. And now Fang. Oh my god. Yes, I know Fang is a cat. I shouldn't want him in with humans, but oh my god, it's Fang. There you go. So that's how I'm doing about it. I keep trying to just laugh and have fun and enjoy, but this just won't go from my head. It's just constantly circling. And I do appreciate every minute I've had with him, and that's why I wanted to do the whole go down memory lane. Oh, this is hard. This is very, very hard, and I don't like it. Like, not at all. And I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. And I just don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't like it. And I know I keep saying that, but I don't know what else to say because I feel like my brain is broken. I feel bad for Osiris because from the moment Osiris has been in our house, Fang was always there. Osiris is needy. So we're going to have to be more there for Osiris. And then that's the other thing that sucks. Osiris is only like, I think, two years, if that, younger than Fang. And I know one day he's going to go too. We're going to have to go through all this crap again. And no offense to Osiris. It is going to hurt because I do love Osiris, but... Fang, Fang. Fang is my heart. We always make jokes that Fang is my familiar. And so if you believe in such things, there you go. That would be it. I don't know how to deal with this. So, yeah. That's my update. <laughs> That's what's uh, taking over most of my world right now is my Fang stuff. So... No cute fun ah, ending to this. Oh, it's just too much. Absolutely too much. So, I can tell you it's squamous cell carcinoma. Um, so, there's the squamous muscles here. Apparently, they make chicken flavored morphine. Um, I don't know. It just really friggin' sucks. So when the day comes, you can guarantee there's going to be a horrible one of these because I'm just going to blah. So while this is not entertaining at all, hopefully it's remotely therapeutic for me. And um, I'm going to stop now because man, am I exhausted, and I'm all clogged up now, and I really need to blow my nose, and my little napkin is a tiny little wad, so I'm going to stop, I'm going to pace around, burn off some energy, and when I return home tomorrow night, I will hug and kiss my kitty, and I don't know, so I guess that's it for now, sorry for being such an elder.